NBC has just brought us a new Constantine television show. So aren't you a tad bit curious as to where this character got his starts in the comic books? Well, it's time for a Know Your Universe about John Constantine, and I'm going to warn you. The show seems to be following the plot from the book, so if you don't want to know where the show is going to potentially go, you might not want to watch this video. But, if you're still here, let's go ahead and get to it. John was born on May 10, 1953, and while giving birth to him and his twin brother, his mother died, and his twin brother was stillborn. His father would then blame him for his mother's death, and the two of them would grow to hate each other. John would then learn that his bloodline was that of the Laughing Magicians, legendary mages who had the power to bluff and trick the gods. Because his family is from this line of magic, John began to learn how to use magical abilities, and one of his first acts of magic was actually to lock away his childhood innocence so that it wouldn't bog him down. Later in the 60s, he ran from home after botching a curse and turning his father into a withered, frail man. And he would eventually end up living in London and rooming with his closest and longest surviving friend, Chaz. In the 1970s, he traveled around getting involved in more occult activities, hoping to haunt his skills, and he eventually built a relationship with a female magician named Zatanna Zatara. But that's not one of the only things that he became obsessed with, as punk rock entered his life, and he began to call himself Johnny Conjob, and he led a band named the Mucus Membrane. I'm not even making this stuff up, guys. While on tour with Mucus Membrane, he got his first taste of being a hero, when he interrupted a magical orgy that went wrong, and he stumbled across the aftermath, an abused child named Astra. This child had summoned a demon to take revenge on the adults who had harmed her, but the demon wouldn't leave. In order to fight against his first demon, John convinced his band, Mucus Membrane, to summon their own demon to combat it. But the demon they summoned wasn't under their control after it defeated Astra's monster. The demon instead tormented John's friends, and it took the girl to hell with him, and this haunted John for years. He would end up in Ravensclaw Asylum to cope with what he had done. And eventually, he would be strong enough to free her and the other children that the demon was keeping. John's next big adventure involved him meeting up with Swamp Thing, and the two of them became a sort of team. John acted as Swamp Thing's voice, protector, and guide, and he even taught Swamp Thing how to amplify his powers, and allowed Swamp Thing to use his body in order to father a child named Tifi. Eventually, they would also part ways, and John would contract lung cancer. Not having much to live for, he actually saved a friend from selling his soul by tricking the demon, known as the First, into drinking holy water. Once the demon drank the holy water, he ran into a problem where he was depowered and unable to collect the soul at the time of collection. For costing him a soul, the First told Constantine that he would make him suffer eternal torment once he died. So John hatched a plan to save himself and secretly sold his soul to two other demons in hell. Once the demons realized what he had done, they realized that he couldn't die because there would be an all-out war in hell over John Constantine's soul. So, they decided to cure John of his cancer so that he wouldn't eventually die. This greatly irritated the first, and he hatched a plan to act his vengeance on John. Well, John still managed to defend himself, though he lost many of his friends in the final battle. Things get even crazier at this point, and it involved more of John's friends leaving, and eventually, he has to actually blackmail God into keeping his own soul out of hell. The next adventure that he goes on involves him striking a deal with a demon who used him to father three demon children. The three children killed everyone that he knew, and even killed his own sister Cheryl. So John goes into the very depths of hell to get Cheryl back, but in the end he fails as the first struck a deal with Cheryl. You see, the first had tricked Cheryl's husband into killing her, and since her husband killed an innocent, he was damned to hell twice. The first deal with Cheryl was that if she stayed in hell willingly, she would take half the load off of her husband. The first then gloated over Constantine as he was sent back to the mortal plane with his sister damned in hell. What happens next is unsettling as John ends up back in Raven's Claw Asylum, which is the location he ended up after losing the child to the first earlier in his career. Well, he finds out that his soul is actually tied to the soul of his twin brother who was stillborn at birth. His brother was supposed to be the descendant of the Laughing Magicians, but John in the womb strangled his brother with the umbilical cord. So, his brother's been trying to take control of John's life, and every time that he tried to take control, it caused all the bad things in John's life to happen. The cancer, his friends dying, his failed relationships, all of it is his unborn brother's fault. So John severed the tie to his brother's soul that he had, and he took control of his life finally. Time would go on and John would eventually fake his own death so that he could vanish, and keep a low profile so he could avoid harming those close to him. Then boom, all the DC publication lines were merged into one. We had a John Constantine in the mainstream DC books. With the New 52 launch, John Constantine got a slight rewrite. His first magical spell cost the life of both of his parents, and he burned his own house down. He's also a part of the Justice League Dark, now along with Zatanna, 
and it's been implied that along with Nick Necro, there was a bit of a love triangle between them. Now, one interesting thing to note about John Constantine is that he is one of the only characters who aged in real time. Before the New 52 launch, I believe he was around the late 50s, early 60s. And as for his powers, it's all dark occult magic. Now for his appearances, he had a 2005 movie starring Keanu Reeves about him. And as many of you know, NBC has just started up their weekly television show. And that is a quick gist of the Hellblazer series that John Constantine started before coming to the New 52. And what it appears to be that NBC is copying right about now. Now, if you want my opinion about the new show, I actually really enjoyed the pilot, and I'm kind of excited to see where this show is going to go. But let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the pilot and what you think of John Constantine. Are you an old school John Constantine fan and you're upset about the New 52 relaunch and you don't want to see this NBC show ruin him? Or are you excited to see the direction that they're going to take this character? I'm Benny for Comic Story, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, favorite, share this video, and I'll see you next time right here. All right, guys, it's Benny, and I'm standing here with Enrica, and she wants to tell you about her book. So what is The Killer Queen about? Killer Queen uh, is a collection of original comics inspired by the band Queen. Um, 40 the artists musical band? The music band Queen. Okay. Freddie Mercury and the whole guy. Um, uh, 40 artists and writers were challenged to uh, take their favorite Queen track and create an original comic inspired by the music. Okay. Um, so we've got, uh, again, 40 beautiful artists and writers in this lovely book. Okay. Is it a consistent story or is it individual short stories? All individual stories, individual, completely original work. Okay. All of them. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. And we'll be hitting the next booth now.